So let me hit that button before we get started. Okay, perfect. All right, um, I want to welcome everybody to um, today's Friday with Fiscal, and we're going to talk about um, the employer distribution, um, both the report and then um, the submission, and then as well as the um, employee retirement share. So what you formerly knew on in Classic as board dis and board ret. So we're going to focus on the payroll side of things. Um, going through, like I mentioned, the report and then the submission. Um, and then we'll touch upon the USAS side of things at the end. Um, but we're going to really focus our efforts on the payroll side of things um, this morning. So, you know, I think the big question when, um, you know, districts are getting familiar with these two um, programs is, like, how are the accounts being charged? You know, how is it coming up with the amounts? So what I've done is I've put together a document and we're going to step through, um, you know, examples of each of, you know, running the report and the submission and um, different scenarios and then the charging process that um, follows or an example of um, an account and how it arrives at the final um, account and amount to charge. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. Um, I will put this place these document this document out on the wiki. So if it's something you know um, you want to print off and kind of have you know by your desk to help um, your districts in the future, um, you'll have something to reference and go back by. I had to chuckle because for those of you I see Sharon's on um, that have been around for um, some time now. I remember um, one of my first trainings on this, um, you know, on board this and board ret. And I had a handwritten document um, provided by Teresa Williams that I kept by my desk and used over and over and over. I guess I'm more of a, you know, have to see it visual kind of learner. So that was super helpful for me. So that's kind of what brought me to, you know, putting something in paper and um, using different examples. So I had to kind of you know, take a walk down memory lane. That's been quite a while ago. Um, so anyway, um, we are going to first, you know, walk through um, the process of generating the report. So under the reports option, um, there is um, an option called employer distribution. This is the report side of things. And I think sometimes, believe it or not, this step gets missed. Um, you know, districts just jump to creating the submission file and then, you know, submitting that to UCS and they forget this important tool. So there is a report that can be generated. Um, districts can, you know, balance that, make sure that the account charging looks right um, before they go any further. So, you know, don't forget to encourage your districts run the report option. So within the report option, um, you know, it, it you as other reports um, and reports, you can change the report title. Um, this can even be run in various um, formats. And I apologize, I have a couple, some people in the waiting room, I'm sorry. Um, so you can generate that in um, CSV, Excel and PDF format. The start and the end dates, you know, what dates do you use? So this is based on, just like classic, your pay dates. So you have to sort of keep in mind, um, you know, am I running this for the month? So maybe those um, insurance premiums that you just pay once or the district just pays once a month, then you'll want to enter the start date as your first pay date and then the end date as your last payday in the month to capture all those figures. Um, if this is something you're running um, for those that are to be paid after every pay, um, Medicare, your retirement, um, the you know, 691 and 690, the employee share that's paid by the board, um, you know, you'll enter the start and the end date probably being the same. So that pay date that you just, that payroll that you just processed. Um, for the most part, I'm not, you know, 
familiar with districts using the pay cycle to determine, um, you know, like they're when you're paying your outstanding payables, more times than not, I think this is going to be left blank. And then we're going to select from the list what payroll items we want um, to be processed. So that's how you're going to use um, or select those codes. This can be then sorted um, by account code or payroll item code. So most generally, if you're running, you know, more than one payroll item, you'll want to sort that then um, by payroll item and not account. So you can get a total then for or all those um, account those figures will be grouped together for that specific payroll item and not by account code. Um, and then you likewise have the um, ability to subtotal then um, by payroll item code, account code, function, fund and function. So we're going to leave these two default to payroll item code. Now we're going to focus um, as we go through our examples on using this checkbox, this use only employer distribution accounts. And we're going to see a difference in what it does um, when the report's generated. So keep in mind um, that this, this is sort of like the override field. So in um, board disk, there was an option that says basically the same thing, use only board disk accounts. Um, in this case, it's use only employer distribution accounts. If this box is checked, the system is only going to use those accounts that were flagged for employer distribution at the time the payroll was processed. Keep in mind, it's using history. So if I go in and check or uncheck that employer distribution checkbox now and run the report, I'm not going to see any difference. Okay, it's all based on history. And we're going to talk about a way to see how that history looked um, in a little bit. And then you have the option to summarize your individual account um, detail or um, list it all out, basically. So in this example, I'm just going to, um, I've kind of pre-generated these to show you different scenarios. Um, but we're going to use and focus on um, Medicare. So I'm going to, you know, in all these options, I've selected the appropriate pay date. Um, and then I've used the, you know, come down below and I've selected the 692, which is our Medicare. Okay. So the first example um, is using then, um, let me bring this back over here. Is that employer use only employer distribution checkbox was marked. So let's go through the, through the process on how the system is arriving at what accounts to use. Um, and then we'll go through some examples um, as to you know the, the charging a little bit later. So if this box is checked, the system looks at all accounts that had that employer distribution checkbox marked. Can everybody see this document okay or do I need to make it bigger? Are we good? All right, if, it, if it's not, then let me know. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's the first thing it does. And again, it's using the history. So it's grabbing that payroll um, account history, how those check boxes were marked at the time the payroll was run for those pay dates that we entered when we generated the report. Then the system is going to substitute the object code um, that's defined on the payroll item configuration. So let me show you where that is. I'm sure you're all familiar with that, but just so we're all on the same page. Under core payroll item configuration, I'm going to, because we're using Medicare, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open up. So these objects, this object code section, this is what I'm talking about. So the system is going out and it's looking at these three fields. So the information that's supplied in the on the payroll item configuration screen. This is super important. The system is not going to be able to calculate the correct um, information if these are not defined. And obviously, you know, I hopefully we're sort of past the point of migrating. Um, I know that caused some problems in the past where, you know, districts were just recently migrated and running um, these programs for the first time and these weren't defined 
um, and that did cause problems. Once they're set up, probably not something we're going to have to change, um, you know, at all. So those, um, once they're in place, the district is good to go. So what object code is it substituting? So it's taking the original object code from that pay account, and it's then going to substitute the appropriate object code um, on from the payroll item configuration screen. If that original object code falls within um, a certified object code, and these are all predefined, classified or non-certified object code, or if it's neither of those, um, it can fall into what we call the other object code, um, which is defined um, by use by the one, the 17 something or 19 something or two something. So that's how the system is then subset knowing what um, object code to pull uh, from that payroll item configuration screen and then substitute. Okay. So that's the second thing it does. The third thing it does then is it applies any mapping. So if the district is using any mapping, and again, that's under utilities, it's already substituted that benefit object code. So you're gonna, you know, go down the line here and you know, see if that. Um, benefit now object code matches anything on the left side um, when it comes to mapping. If the um, system finds an account that matches, then it's going to use the right side, and that becomes the new account then that is carried forward in step three. Okay, so I think an important thing to keep in mind is sometimes we forget the object code's already been substituted here. So that's why we're seeing, you know, this whole column start with two, the benefit, right? So um, the other thing to keep in mind when it comes to account mapping is once an account hits any line in mapping, it that the account that it's mapped to becomes its final account. It cannot be mapped on down the line. So that's why we always say put your more specific accounts first so that those don't hit any of those general, you know, wildcard lines, um, you know, before those specific accounts. So again, put your specific accounts in front of those wildcard or those general accounts so that, you know, yes, it's going to find that line, charge it to that mapped um, account. And then any other accounts that might not have, you know, all of those account dimensions, it's going to hit that um, more general account, you know, further down in the charging process. Okay. All right. If at any time, I kind of always forget to say this, if at any time, if anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and, um, you know, ask. Please feel free to interrupt me. And then finally, step four. So once the account mapping is applied, it's actually using, and I think this is another piece that, that gets missed a lot, um, is it uses under system configuration, there's an account mapping configuration um, option that says what account dimensions should I carry forward? So, oops, under system, configuration, I like totally lost my train of thought here. Okay, um, under account mapping, it says then to carry forward the operational use unit, the special cost center, and then the subject. So it will by default zero out the job and the instructional level. So I think this gets you know, kind of missed sometimes, um, we'll get questions, you know, well, this is the account they want charged. Where is it even coming up with, you know, this account? Nine chances out of 10, it's this configuration screen, okay? That's like kind of tripping, tripping you up. So again, this is, this is going to give you, you know, that general, you know, 
all inclusive. This applies to all accounts. Okay. All right. Let's bring this document back over here. So that um, you know steps you through. Then, if that checkbox is marked, you know the process it takes to arrive at that final account. So I'm going to now show you. Um, you know, once we've created that employer distribution report for our payroll, the pay dates, um, and we check that box, or that box is checked that says use only um, employer distribution, um, that process. So the first thing districts want to do is make sure that, you know, go back to their pay report. You know, what was the amount on their pay report for employer distribution? In this case, it's $40.28. What was my total on my payroll item detail report? You know, obviously those two should match, but, you know, $40.28 is what my employer distribution, you know, report and then going forward submission file should, should equal. If that doesn't equal, and we're going to walk through an example here, then you know the district doesn't want to continue on in the process because that's they're going to be out of balance when it comes to the end of the month. So match that report back to your payroll item detail report. Your payroll report, um, and I, you know, this is just one um, person got paid in this payroll, so I realized that it's this is way easy an easy example. But this flag here on the um, pay report says how that employer distribution checkbox was marked at the time the payroll was processed. So if there's a question, you know, as you know, how how is that flag set when the district processed the payroll? The pay report is a good place to check. Okay, if you're looking at a specific person. Okay. So now, in this case, we've run the employer distribution. Again, I've kind of set all these up um, to use in, as our examples. So we're checking that box. And you can see here that it went through that process of then, you know, arriving at the account based on the steps we just talked about um, and our amount matches. So that's good. $40.28. Okay. All right. So now the next um, example is if that use only um, or use only employer distribution account checkbox is not marked, how does the system arrive at its um, accounts to charge? So the system is going to look at all accounts charged. So, you know, the first example was it's just going to look at those accounts that had that checkbox mark. The second example is it's going to grab any account from that account history. And again, that box is sort of like your override field. So if um, districts would miss, um, you know, checking that box on maybe some miscellaneous payments, um, this is a you know, an easy way to override um, something that was processed during the payroll and, you know, needs corrected. Now, keep in mind, it's going to then override and use all accounts for, you know, the entire payroll. So if it's just, you know, one specific instance, um, you know, that checkbox, unchecking that checkbox might not work um, for them. Then it goes through, again, the exact same process that we just talked about before. It substitutes the object code based on the object code defined on the payroll item configuration. You know, is it a certified? Was the original object code a certified, non-certified, or does it fall into that other category? Um, so once the object code's then substituted, then it's gonna apply the mapping, and then it will use any um, account, um, or I'm sorry, the account mapping configuration 
um, to know what accounts to carry forward. Okay. So let's, you know, kind of step through a couple examples um, in, you know, of those two options that we just talked about. So, and again, I'm kind of pulling from, you know, that, that report that we just looked at. Um, so in this case, the use only employer distribution account checkbox was marked. And then that first example, we just had, you know, one person and they happen to have one account that was being charged. So the original um, gross amount I've listed here, the amount withheld was here, that $40.28. The original salary account was the account we've listed below. It's then looking at that, um, you know, the, that original object code to know, okay, now substitute that based on, you know, those predefined, whether it falls into that certified, classified, or other category. In this case, the original object code falls into that certified object code range. So it's using the um, 249 code, which is set up on that payroll item configuration screen, and it's gonna substitute the object code. So you can see here, it went from 112 to 249. Then it looks at your account mapping, and we there was no account mapping um, that, you know, this account was not um, on that screen and mapped to anything else. So it remains the same. Next, then it looks at that account mapping configuration screen, and it uses then, um, you know, those dimensions because the subject, the special cost center, and the operational unit are checked, meaning carry those values forward. This is then the account that um, the system will use to um, list on the report. And if we go back to that, I don't, you know, need to bore you. And that's the account then that was listed on that report um, for $40.28. Okay. Um, the second example then, um, the one that we just talked about, um, is um, or this is a more complex example, I'm sorry. This is the use, when the use only employer account checkbox is marked and there's multiple accounts involved, but not all of them are flagged for distribution. So in this example, um, you know, again, here's the amount withheld. Here's the account then that was flagged for employer distribution. The employee also had two other accounts but these were not flagged for employer distribution. So it is going to only use this account that was flagged for distribution. Again, go through the process of substituting the object code using the account mapping, the account mapping configuration to arrive then at the account that, that um, the report's gonna um, use in its charging process. Okay, if we take that one step further and we um, have the use only employer distribution account box checked, again, this, um, this time they're paid on multiple accounts and they're all flagged for distribution. How does that um, proration process work? So again, we're using the same example $40.63 was what was withheld. We've had have their gross listed, you know, 28, 89, 12. And these are the gross amounts that apply to each of those accounts. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're all flagged for distribution. So the system is going to substitute the object code on all three of those accounts. There is no account mapping for any of these accounts. So those accounts remain, and then it's going to use that account mapping configuration to know, you know, um, what dimensions of the account to carry forward. In this case, you know, it, it, it is to carry forward all of those account dimensions that have a value in them. So those um, all remain the same in this case. 
Now, how does the charging work? So the system does its charging is like a percent to the total. So it's gonna take then that original, it's gonna take the gross amount. So we have 28, 89, 12, but of that 26, 75, 12 was charged to the first account. So it's doing a percent to the total to come up with what then percent to charge that $40.63, okay? So it does carry out the decimal place um, to six, six decimal places. So that's why those um, percents are listed as such. So once it does the percent to total for each of the accounts involved, then it's gonna then apply that percent, as I just said, to um, you know eat that amount to arrive at the individual amounts to charge each account. So in this case, we have 37.62, 226 and 75 cents. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but I do think that that's not the right example. Thought I had an example to show you here. Yeah. So we're using Malone in this case. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. So you can see that um, based on our calculations, that 3762, 226, and 75 cents all matched that example that we just um, went through. Okay. So here's, you know, that matches our report. Okay, are there any questions on, you know, that process as far as like how it does the calculations when there are multiple accounts involved? Okay, I like I said, I think I got ahead of myself. I'm gonna jump back to this second example. And this um, was then our example of, um, oh, this is our pay report. Duh, no wonder it's not looking like I thought it should. Okay, so this um, here is an example of using our employer, um, setting that use only employer distribution account to true. But in this case, if I go back to the pay report, and again, you know, this is a good tool to help us see what, how the pay accounts were charged at the time the press, the payroll was run. Um, but you're also going to be able to see then that um, employer um, amount listed at the bottom of the pay report. So in this case, the um, pay report says it should be 106.03 um, on our payroll item detail report. It also says $106.03. When it comes to running our employer distribution report, when we ran this and we you know, answered the option to use only employer distribution accounts, you can see here that this does not match. So we're off, all right? So one way that you can sort of um, see what, who might be off is to go back to that payroll item detail report and search for that amount, that difference. If you get lucky, um, you know, you can do the search, control find, and we could search for the, that amount that um, we're off. If you get lucky, it's just one person. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Um, so another option that I've found can be helpful is to run that employer distribution um, report on checking the box to um, that use that override field so that it does generate a report for every um, account that was charged. So chances are there was probably an account or accounts that didn't have that employer distribution box checked and the system does not have an account to fall back or default to so that employee gets omitted off of the report altogether. So I did create, um, and probably, you know, maybe many of you already have something in place, um, but this is a report definition 
um, or a report that I've created that allows you to enter a pay date or pay, you know, a range. And it shows you then how that employer distribution flag was checked. It's pulling right from the pay um, account history um, at the time the payroll was processed. So this could also be a helpful tool for you to use um, or districts to use to know, hey, you know, that's not the way it looks now, but maybe that flag just got changed. So, you know, how did it look at the time the payroll was run? Again, this is pulling from the history file. So it's gonna give you a good picture of how that looked at that time, okay? So once then, you know, you figure out, you know, maybe it's a mapping situation. Um, maybe it's just a case where if an employee was omitted altogether, the history, you know, is not accurate. It might be a case where you have to then just create the submission file, send it over to USAS, and then modify your purchase order so it includes and it is for the correct amount. Okay. Again, it's all based on history. So just checking the box now, it, it will help and um, correct things going forward, but it's not going to fix it, you know, at the time the payroll was run. Okay. So you can see here then that this um, um, account now balance, it, it balances. So um, going back to what it should have been, that 10603, it now balances and looks like it should. Okay. All right. Okay, in our fourth example, then this is the employer, use only employer distribution account checkbox is not marked and multiple accounts have been charged, but not all of them are marked for employer distribution. So in this case, it's taking it right from, you know, how was the, how did the payroll items, I'm sorry, pay accounts look at the time the payroll was processed. So charge, of, I'm sorry, it's not looking at, I'm getting myself all confused. It's not looking at how it was charged at the time the payroll was run. This is that override field and it's, it's gonna use then everything um, that was used in the, the payment. So here's then the, the, all the accounts that were um, charged. Again, you can see how those accounts looked at the time the payroll was run, but because this box is unchecked, unmarked, it says use, use everything, use all the accounts. So again, it's gonna use all three of those accounts, substitute the object code, apply the mapping, carry forward or not carry forward those account dimensions, okay? And then here's an example then of the charging. So again, it's taking that, using that gross amount, each of those gross amounts paid to those individual accounts. And it's going to do that percentage to total and then apply that percent to those, to that, um, the amount that was, um, the payroll item amount that was withheld, okay? So these two examples are almost virtually the same thing. And you can see how um, answering those prompts, you know, that checkbox differently, um, you can arrive at the same outcome, okay? So here then is an example of what we just talked about. And again, our on the pay report, you know, it's our total then for the board chair of Medicare is 10306. Our payroll item total is this detail report, total is the same. And you can see here that we have use only employer distribution amounts true. And it's going to then charge all of those individual accounts based on how that um, pay
pay account was set up during the um, charging process. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any ex any questions about any of the examples we went through and um, the charging, the account, char you know, what accounts, how the system is using the accounts it is? I know that this can be like, to explain it, it can be very uh, overwhelming, but I'm hoping that by taking this document and kind of applying the situation that might um, apply to the situation you're working with your district um, on, that this will be helpful. You can, again, just take that piece of paper like I talked about <laughs> um, that was so helpful to me in the beginning and then step through the process, you know, is based on, you know, what situation meets the um, example or the situation you're working with at your with the district. Okay. When it comes to then the that's the report side. And remember, it's very, very important for the districts to run the report first, make sure that you know the accounts, everything, the amount obviously looks correct, the account charging looks correct. Um, once they're satisfied with the report, then um, they're going to go to USAS integration, employer distribution submission, and we're going to basically enter the same information that we entered in uh, on the report side. And again, this is super important that everything be entered exactly like it was on the report side. So you're going to enter your pay dates or date as your start and end date. Make sure that this box here is checked or unchecked accordingly. Um, you know, if it wasn't checked when the report was run, it shouldn't be checked here. Otherwise you're gonna end up with different outcomes. And then obviously select then the um, appropriate payroll items from the list below. Okay. So once we want to just, oops. I'm just going to show you a quick example of, I have all of my selections exactly like I need them. I'm going to click this show submission preview option, and it's going to give me a message that, you know, um, in this case, it's good because I've already created that submission file for the 1130 um, payroll using the same option. So it's saying, are you sure you want to resubmit this? Um, I'm going to close out of this just so I can give you a show you what um, the district should verify. Down below here, then it's going to give you that total one more time and then um, who this is being paid to. So once again, you just want to make sure that this total is what the district is expecting it to be. And then at the very bottom left corner, there's a submit to USAS option. So this is going to look slightly different in this grid um, up here um, based on then where it's at um, on the USAS side of things. So if we've just submitted, we've clicked this submit to USAS option, then you're going to get the status of pending. So it's going to tell you it's been, you know, sent to USAS. It's just waiting for them to, you know, that side to do something with. Once then that pending transaction is posted, this status then on the payroll side changes to posted. So it's been posted on the USAS side and it gets updated then on the payroll side. So you can see here the difference I wanted to show you of those statuses. Okay. All right. Um, this is also, I think, a really easy, quick way for districts when they're balancing at the end of the month, the quarter. You know, if they have any questions about what, um, you know, came from the payroll side of things, then um, these, you know, get, this grid gives you a quick way to check um, those figures. Now, that doesn't mean that once the 
submission file got sent to USAS, you know, the, the uh, purchase order could be modified and changed. So, um, but at least that gives you a quick look at how things, you know, came over or should have come over from the payroll side. Okay, you can use this grid. All right. Again, I am not going to go into a lot of detail um, as far as what happens then on the USAS side of things. Um, I did want to point out, and, and that is primarily because um, during the USAS intermediate training, uh, Amanda did a wonderful job of um, taking you through that process. So um, there's a lot of information and detail already available on our YouTube um, channel, on our, the video. Um, so if you um, want to make note, um, and so you don't have to listen to the video from the beginning, um, right after about um, an, hour, an hour and 26 minutes, shortly after um, where it says options with reports is where um, Amanda picks up and talks about then okay. so, um, um, the okay. USAS side of right here, the pending transactions and the employer distribution submission. Okay, so about um, an hour and 27 minutes, I should say. So if you have questions when it comes to um, that side of things and that process, you know, go out and, and use this um, information that's already been provided for you to, you know, hopefully clear up any questions you might have on that. Okay. All right. Lastly, then, we are going to switch gears and talk a little bit about the employer retirement chair. So again, I've sort of put together um, the same sort of document. Um, employer retirement chair doesn't have quite as many, um, you know, parts to it, so to speak. Um, it is very complex. Um, I totally understand sometimes, you know, the charging can get a little sticky and um, confusing. Um, but again, we've kind of I've broken this down into um, an, an option or a configuration that we're going to talk about here in a minute, checking that um, configuration option or unchecking it. So just similar to um, the employer distribution side of things, there is also a, con a configuration option. And I'm going to pull that up here. Under system, there's an option that says employer retirement share. And there's the sort of override checkbox that um, says, you know, yes, use all the employer or all the pay accounts that were charged or use only those that were flagged for employer distribution. Okay. So this is the box. And I think a lot of times this gets missed as well. You know, how's it coming up with the account that it's charging? Well, there is also, you know, kind of an override, if you will, um, setting when it comes to the employer retirement share. And that's under this configuration option here. Okay. So don't forget about that. Um, the system kind of goes through the same sort of process when it comes to the accounts um, that it's going to charge. So if that um, use only employer distribution checkbox is marked, then it's going to only use those accounts then that had that box checked um, at the time the payrolls were run. Um, it's going to substitute the object code based on what we talked about before, certified, classified, or other. And then it's going to apply any account mapping. And then it's going to then use that. Um, uh, I think I have this. I'm sorry. This is not. I copy and pasted this from. I'll get this changed. This should be that employer retirement share um, configuration. So I will get this document updated before I post it. So I apologize for that. I didn't catch that before. So is that box checked or not? Okay. <clears throat> then secondly, in our example, this is 
that checkbox is not marked. Again, it's only going, or I'm sorry, it will look at all the accounts that were charged, substitute the object code, and then it goes through the account mapping. And again, that employer retirement share um, configuration to know, um, you know, this should just be, this is kind of an override. It's not dimensions in this case, it's yes or no, okay? All right, so we do have sort of a note here that talks about, you know, if the object code used when paying an employee cannot be matched, then the system is going to look at the employee's um, first live or active pay account um, it finds. So in this example, the original pay, um, pay account object code was 115. That does not fall into the, uh, you know, the certified, the classified, or the other object code code range. So it's going to use then that first active pay account advice finds for the employee. In this case, it was 113. So that's the account then that it's going to use to go through its charging process. Okay. All right. Um, the second note talks about um, if uh, when a payroll was processed, if an employee's pay account, the employer distribution checkbox was not checked, and the employer um, retirement share option in the configuration screen says use only employer distribution accounts, the system again will use the employee's first active pay account that um, has that employer distribution checkbox checked. So just to clarify, you know, some kind of unique, odd, you know, probably not, doesn't happen all that often situations, you know, what, what does the system do to um, arrive at that final account? Okay. All right. When it comes to then the report, so, um, when you access, again, you're going to want districts to run the report first, then create the submission file. Um, you know, we have outlined here how how to run the report. Um, and basically, you know, it's entering those amounts that they're getting from the retirement systems that need to be paid. And then the system is going to go through a calculation process. And I provide, provided some examples here because I think um, this is different than classic charged. So just getting familiar with how redesign is charging those versus how um, classic did um, does take some getting used to. Remember, everything is coming from the payroll side now. So um, in classic, board ret used those month to date expenditures. So that could, you know, include some. Um, account changes, basically. Um, and that is not the case with things now in the redesign. Coming from the payroll side, um, you know, it's using, again, that pay account history, and then how you're answering um, that checkbox, you know, on the configuration screen, okay? So it's first taking that, though all of those non-general fund accounts, and it's taking that straight 14%. And then it's gonna prorate any general fund account um, accordingly. And we've kind of walked through some examples here. Um, we have an example in the documentation. So I feel like, you know, take this example then if you're if a district is trying to figure out, you know, how it's arriving at the amount that's that it is charging. Again, take this example and kind of you know, step through the process, and hopefully that's going to um, be helpful in, in the amount the report is um, listing. So here in our example, the gross is listed here, and then we're using an SERS example, and the amount, you know, withheld was 161.70. So there were two accounts charged. Um, the gross amount of each of those is listed here. It's then taking that percent to total. So 
the, the one account, the gross charged, um, the second account that a gross that gross charged um, into that hole to come up with the percent. It's then taking the amount that was withheld, that SERS amount on the 400 record divided by 14%. It's gonna take that, then adjusted prorated gross times those percentages we just calculated above. These are the amounts then that would be listed on the report for each of those accounts. Okay. All right. Um, when it comes to like the prorating calculations, um, here's an example then of how that's going to happen. It's going to take the original amount minus the non-general fund account total. And that then it becomes your prorated total. So let me just kind of point this, I'm gonna swing this over here for a hot second. I have the employer retirement share run already. And I've kind of used this as our example. So hopefully you can see it okay. So our, um, let me point out before we get started, we in this example don't have any non-general fund accounts. So probably not a realistic example, but a quick and easy one. So you kind of get, get the gist. So this up here. So the original amount then is that $1,053.96. We're taking the amount that you're wanting to pay. In this example, it's 1,500 minus any non-general fund um, amounts. In this case, we don't have any. So our calculated prorated total remains at 1,500. And then we're gonna take that calculated prorated total divided by the prorated total to get a percentage. We then take the original amount so that $1,053.98. We don't have any, again, this is kind of showing that you the process or the, you know, and the exact, exact example. We don't have any non-general fund um, accounts. So we're dividing that 1,500 into the original amount to come up with a percent. And then we're going to take that $323.02 times that percent to come up with the $459.71. And I kind of use this first line here as the example. So you can see here that that total, that prorated amount, matches our calculations. So this $323.02 that was the original amount withheld um, from this employee. So that's where that amount is coming from. I think I kind of skipped over that. Okay. All right. I know employer just uh, employer retirement share can be equally more difficult than employer distribution. So again, hopefully by um, taking these examples, um, you know, print them out, kind of have them beside you, you can kind of step through the process and make it a little easier. Okay. Once then you've generated the report, um, just like we talked about with employer retirement share, you're going to go to USAS integration, employer retirement share submission. And again, you're going to enter, you know, the beginning ending dates as your pay date range or just a pay date if you're, well, for employer, um, I'm sorry, for employer retirement share, you're probably um, running this for an entire month. You get, you get the amounts from the retirement system. So this will be your first pay of the month and your last pay of the month. Again, pay dates. And then you're gonna enter the amount to distribute for SERS and SERS. So those amounts they're getting from the retirement system that need to be paid, and you can click then that show submission preview to make sure that that amount um, 
you know, just double check that amount one more time. And then down again in the lower left-hand corner is the submit employer retirement share to USAS. Okay, that goes to USAS, just like we talked about with the employer retirement share. Employer distribution. I'm sorry, I'm getting my two programs mixed up. All right. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we talked about? I know I went through that very quickly. Lots of examples and information thrown at you in a short amount of time. Um, again, hopefully you can take, you know, the, the examples. I'll correct that one little mistake on um, the example, the steps. And I'll, like I said, I will put that out on the wiki for you to use um, if you feel it would be helpful. All right, I don't see any questions. I did wanna, before we wrap things up today, just point out that we do have just a couple um, Fridays with fiscal remaining for the calendar year. Um, the next will be December 2nd. We're gonna take, you know, a week off here for um, Thanksgiving um, and regroup then to talk about the November releases. Um, and then later in the month, we'll be doing the tips and tricks session on receipts and refunds. And then lastly, to wrap things up for the calendar year, on December 16th, we'll be covering the ITC management application. Um, I know that Michelle has been working on the um, 1099 side of the documentation, um, and we will be wrapping up and getting the um, W-2 and ODJFS documentation um, out there as well. So if you haven't um, you know, gone out there recently or noticed, I think Michelle's done, if I'm not mistaken, um, with the 1099 um, part of things. Um, so you might want to check that out so you can familiarize yourself with it um, before we have the training. But I just wanted to point out, those are the last three Fridays with Fiscals we will have before the end of the year. Um, again, I thank you for your time and um, I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and we'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you.